Yeah, yeah, she's just very thin, but blood oh. volume calculated for 10.8 kilo of gooch. Uh, point, uh, 840 yeah. uh, blood, risk of blood loss? Blood. Hello, um, ground plate is connected, confirmed side. Um, right side of the side of the station. Uh, review plan of operative team. So, you can know that this first off guidance for the CSI light station <coughs> and then prepare it for the screw. I'm not sure, I'm probably going to just use a 3-5 screw, mm -hmm. but um, I might try to use a headless compression screw, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Let me know. I'll hold off on opening any of that until you're ready. Um, confirm instruments, you were just saying. Um, did you want photos taken? Um, no. Lovely. And uh, potential complications. Um, so I'm just going to go over the CT scan now before James repairs the SI luxation. So this is a CT of the pelvis, and we can see that the left uh, sacroiliac joint is in its normal position, and the right one is disrupted and displaced. As we move back through the CT scan, we can see that there are multiple pubic fractures in here, and I believe there's some ischial fractures as well back here. Um, the only one that we need to repair, however, is the sacroiliac luxation because that's the only one that's really affecting the weight-bearing axis um, of the patient. So I'm going to switch back over to the camera. Um, and yeah, so James has just asked me to measure how long the screw needs to be, and so I'm going to do that back on the CT scan. So we'll go to the other SI joint, and I'll get a ruler here. You want to go halfway across? Um, I made the same thing also, just to the opposite side of the canal, where I want to use it. Like that? All right, so what I'm measuring here is 30, um, 30 millimeters-ish. Um, so that'll get you to the opposite. So 32 will get you to the opposite side, and that's including the thickness of the ileal wing. And then the other thing I do is just measure the, um, the width of the sacrum or is it the screw to help the screw widen? Yep, so the width here is about seven and a half millimeters. Yep. Uh, eight millimeters. So in terms of the size of the implants, um, you have to measure on headless compression screws, but so I'm going to switch the microphone back over to the camera. Okay, and that will give you a little bit clearer audio when I get back over closer to the camera side. Can I get some um three All right, so the theater is all set up. We've got the patient here um, uh, under drapes, and we've got the fluoroscope uh, in the middle of the, the field here. I can zoom in a little bit more. Now, when we come up over and see the fluoroscope over here, that's our first image that James has taken. Um, and that's uh, uh, cranial caudal view uh, of the sacrum. And when we fluoro again, it's going to be a lateral view, similar to what you'd see on a lateral radiograph. So I'm just placing um, some sutures in the corners of the water drapes right now to, instead of using towel clamps, one of the reasons I don't like to use towel clamps is that they're metallic and so when we're using fluoroscopy um, they can impact the image processing and um, make it a bit hard to see the image you want to look at. So we use the suture material that doesn't have to see. 
the group Kenneth um, Duncan, one of our residents in here, um, helping us today. And then we've got Jeff and Lauren, a couple of our nurses as well. So that's Kath over there. And that's Jeff's over here. And that's Lauren, who's really happy to be here. <laughs> One of the things we like to do before we start any surgery is just to do a whip around the room, to see how everyone's feeling, um, check everyone's levels for the day. <laughs> Something you can. I'm sitting around a solid eight out of ten, I think. Eight out of ten. It eight has out to be out of ten. ten. Can't be higher than ten. Ten's the highest. So I'm an eight out of twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, I'm going to let you take over. So oh all you have to do is you can focus here, mm -hmm. you can focus up there, yeah. back to here, <laughs> and then the zoom is here, so you can zoom in and out there. And Jess, if you want to monitor the chat and see if anybody's asking questions, I'll show you how to do that. Um, so Lauren, what are your levels? Yeah, I'd say I'm actually a solid eight too. It's eight. a good day. It's good. It's good. I've had some bread cordial. I'm feeling So just putting the last couple of these sutures in to secure their corner drapes and we're going to go ahead and put on the um, patient drape next. Um, so Jess, you're obviously not going to stay in here once we start. Lauren, can you grab that door can and deal with that? So we're going to put a Mayo stand cover um, on top of the C arm now to just provide some protection there. If you guys have any questions, we'll um, try and get someone to look at the comments on the screen and address those questions as we go through. If anyone's walked on here or not. Um, go to the screws to start. I just want to see what they look like. Please. leg right there, it's in lateral recumbency, so that's the left hind limb. Talk is down there. Yeah, it's right, sure. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to do it again. Well, I think just push that tight in, maybe where the mind stand is. Yeah. Back over the fluoro, and James is about the fluoro right now. So just to have a look at what's going on in the patient. Do you want that? No? Uh, there's still a few things over there that we might need as well. Just getting some more information. So, on the um, CP scan, 
technically we probably could have got away without doing a CT scan in this case. Um, but we started to perform CT scans routinely on pelvic fractures. Um, and I do that because a few cases I've identified um, fractures within the pelvis that we weren't expecting just on the plain film x ray So now by matter of course, I just do the CT scan um, for pretty much every case that is a pelvic fracture. And I really think it helps with the preoperative plan, especially when we're doing something for fluoroscopic guidance. If we can um, plan as accurately as possible before we walk in the operating room, I think that's optional. So I'm going to start doing some fluoro on the scoot, sit down. So you can see here um, on the fluoro image, um, we've got a lateral view of the pelvis essentially. The excess dilatation is not very um, displaced, so it should make um, a reduction and everything else fairly straightforward. Uh, do you want the fluoro gantry higher? Yeah, I'm not sure it would be higher. You have to raise that. Yeah, come on. Alright. No, no. I'm sorry, the fluoro head. Sorry, uh, sorry, the fluoro gantry. Oh, the actual fluoro head. Just say like you have more room to. Thank you, Deborah. So we're just going to do a little approach down on the issue um, to grab on there with the camera pull set. So if you didn't hear that, James is making an approach to the ischium uh, just so he can grab onto the bone with a uh, bone holding forcep. That's going to allow him to position uh, the ileal wing more anatomically uh, in the spot that it's meant to go. One of the challenges with fluoroscopic surgery is to not get your hands in that field. So we're doing as much as we can to minimise exposure to our cells with the radiation source. So James has got a solid grip now on the ischium using a Kern bone holding forcep. You can see that he can basically move the whole dog. Come back over to the fluoro now. So I can manipulate the way this is in there too. So the first thing I'm going to do is place a um, 045 pin into the um, pelvis. Can you move that 045 pin just as well? 045 pins, please. Mm -hmm. The first pin is going to go in um, this is a positioning device. It's going to keep the pelvis in a single place while we um, put our final fixation into the their legs. So we're so that's the pin that James has put in blindly. And he's going to redirect that in order to get it right down into the sweet spot, which is in basically the body of S1. Are you going to use a cannulated screw or? Um, probably, I'm not sure. The benefit of the cannulated screw is that you can drive, you can drill the hole and then drive the screw right over the pin that you put in there as a positional pin. So that's slipped off the back of the sacrum there. I'm sure James is really happy for me to do the call, calling the play-by-play. -play. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ah, you screwed it up this time. Yeah. So that looks better. Millions of people watching, James. Okay, nice. So it's the wife. Just five. Just five? <laughs> <laughs> Million. Five million people. Yeah. So you can see actually what I'm trying to do is go a little bit too far forward on the earlier wing, so I'm just slipping off the forward aspect of the earlier wing, so I'm trying to pull this earlier wing back a section. So there's the pin sticking out of the, the leg there and he's manipulating it around as he's driving it in order to get the best positioning on the fluoroscope. I can see it's probably just maybe impinging on the um, canal, spinal canal a little bit. So I'm probably just going to leave that in there for now, now that it's in. I'm going to rotate the fluoroscope the image around just to see where my pelvis is in the other view. So he's going for the orthogonal view on the uh, fluoroscope. He's going to have to drop the gantry down a bit. I feel like this is kind of like Iron Chef, yeah. where you've got the chefs in there and then you've got the commentators okay. inside. Ooh, he's going for the orthogonal view. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So you can see on that positioning, um, the reduction is not quite perfect, so I actually want to get the little wing position a little bit further forward from where it is. Um, the alignment overall is not too bad, so I might just try and reposition that a little bit. Um, let's see if so having fluoroscopy is um, really, really helpful, obviously, when you're doing these minimally invasive procedures. Um, in fact, you really can't get away without it. So now we'll do the other orthogonal view, which will be a lateral shot, and we'll see how that looks. Position, the pin is just for positioning the bone and holding it still while he drives the screw. Um, uh, and if you were to use a cannulated screw, then you would have to put a pin exactly in the proper position because that's going to be the guide that the drill is going to drill over and the screw is going to be screwed in over as well. Lauren, can I get a, um, just check what size cannulated drill is you have? Mm -hmm. Did you ask me to put any other in here? Do you know? I'm not going to answer. So this um, thing that I'm putting in as Charles has suggested, I'm going to use this as a guide pin for my drill, ultimately. So I'm just making sure this one's back on. So that looks just about perfect. So just see what James is doing down here on the patient. So just repeatedly flurrowing and moving that pin position around until 
get it exactly in the right spot. I know, drill. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> no. This is very smooth today. I didn't film it. So the problem with the drill that we just had, so we're just going to get a new one. The problem was I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> you can get the uh, radio loosening drills yeah. um, that you can have. Just right, and it's a right angle drill with a radio loosening head and you can just drop it down. Just like that. I've looked for them on eBay. Have Haven't found them at the right price. They sound expensive. Yeah. So we're just waiting for the new functioning drill. Oh yeah, there is one there. Just checking that positioning again. Do you need the uh, the gantry raised again? No, this is slightly out of the way. Okay, just move it out of the way. All right, so now we're using a wire driver to drive that pin in exactly on the angle that he had measured before. Before I finish it off, I've just gone through the earlier wing before I go into the sacrum. I'm just going to quadruple check the location of that pin. Looks pretty good. So that pin is absolutely perfect. We're right in the middle of the body of S1. That looks really good thing. So we'll do the orthogonal view now and check to make sure that the positioning is what we think it is. So now we're using a cannulated drill bit, which is going to has a hole in the center of the drill bit, and you actually feed the drill bit over the um, the wire, and that guides it exactly where um, exactly where you want. So just looking at that, I'm just worried that pin is a little bit vengeful in the sacrum when it's bang on straight. And because we've got Claro in here, I think it is important to pay attention to detail with accuracy. So, well, you could argue that that one would get away with. I just want to make triple sure that we're okay. And remembering the target I'm aiming for is only about seven millimeters in size. And we're putting a three five screw down there. So that's a big screw relative to the size of the sacrum. Having these other pins in as a reference makes it a lot easier for me to know where I'm going with these other ones. Any questions? This really appeals to my own retentive nature. Mm -hmm. 
second pin that I put in there. One of the issues is if we put a bunch of pins in there we can turn the bone into sort of Swiss cheese. So the first pin I'm pretty happy with is we're hoping to try and make it a little bit better but I think on balance that um, does kind of depend what we want to do. So the next thing we're going to do is just open up a space here for our drill bit. I know where that pin's going, so I'm just stabbing essentially blindly down onto the earlier wing there. So again, if you didn't catch that James is using the um, using a scalpel blade to cut down onto the pin all the way down to the bone so that the drill bit will slide over that pin um, easily without engaging too much soft tissue. So here comes the drill bit that's going to go right over or not. Sorry. <laughs> Getting the other pins out of the way. So do you want to show the end of that drill bit, Jen? See if I can zoom in on that. That's right, you just hold it still. Come back out a little bit. So we're trying to show you that there's a hole going right down the middle of that pin, but I don't know that we're the drill bit, but I don't know that we're gonna have a lot of luck there. Um, anyway. So the drill is always um, gonna run over the top of this drill bit. 
So you're using that pin as a guide. The drill bit goes right over the top of that. So you're dri drilling a guide slide hole first. And this feels solid all the way through, which is a good thing. So I'm just going to leave that on there. I'm going to come back and check where this is going and how deep I am. You can see that that drill bit is is going right over the pin. So what size drill bit is that? Um, it's a two five drill bit. It's a three five drill bit. So that's a two five drill bit, and that's gonna be the um, the far core, the trans cortex of the sacrum, and so it's 2.5 millimeters in diameter, so that the 3.5 millimeter threads will engage the bone. And he's going to redrill the near cortex or the ilial wing using 3.5 millimeter drill bit, so that the threads in the 3.5 screw are going to glide. Um, going to glide through the bone and then engage in the um, sacrum. And while I can't um, see where this hole is, I can feel where the drill bit's kind of dropping into it, so I'm just going to So we're using a cannulated 3 5 drill bit, but what am I actually going to do? Just drop my pin down there. So the nice thing about the cannulated drill bits is that they go over the pins, but sometimes they end up pulling you pin out of the hole that you wanted to create. So you just reinserted the pin manually, right? So we can see that he's advanced the 3.5 the oversized drill bit, so it's just going from the medial cortex of the earlier wing, so that when we put screws in, they're going to engage the sacrum, but not the earlier wing, so we'll be able to compress that together. And while this part, or this surgery doing it this way can take longer than it would to do it open, it's minimally invasive, there's much less tissue trauma, um, and obviously a lot less time to close the, the incision. And I would argue that normally this is a bit more streamlined than what we're doing right now. Um, it's a small bolt, it's about 10 kilos, so it's probably isn't very big, so it's always a bit busy trying to line everything up. But the view of this, as Charles said, just is the accuracy of the production you can get. And also the tissue trauma, so I've done all this sort of incision that's a centimeter in length. So you can see I've dropped that screw in now. It's gone through the um, cortex of the, the hole that I've made, the oversized hole, the 3 5 hole, and then the little wing. And now it's about to engage into the sacrum. So I just periodically check as I'm screwing this in to make sure that it's going where I want to do it. Now you can see that using my outstanding cinematography, you can see the reflection of James's hands in the other screen on the fluoroscope. That's intended, intended for stylistic effect. Yeah. 
Thank you. Should have just had a mirror there. And then perfect. So that's really solid there. You can see that screw is nice and robust. It's going to hold that really nicely. And James, are you going to pull that positional pin out? Yeah, I'll probably pull that out. I'm actually going to put it on with a screw instead of 32. So, so you get more compression? Yeah, this I didn't get quite. The head of the screw, you can make out there's a cortical line this here. I'm not sure we can make that out. Um, just below the screw head, and I really want that screw head engaging into that. So James is replacing that screw with a slightly shorter one because the depth of the hole that he drilled isn't quite deep enough to accommodate a 32 millimeter screw. And so he's putting in a 30 so that it will really compress the, uh, the ilial wing against the sacrum. And again, this is just accuracy that you don't get during the opening. And really paying attention to detail, I think with this is important. Let's talk about the one percent as a surgery and taking care of as many of those as possible at the best outcome you can across the head. <clears throat> so you can see that screw head now is going to start to get down to that critical one and then you start to compress. And that looks great. I'd be really happy with that. So normally I'll leave that anti-rotational pin in there. In this case I'm going to pull it out because it does impinge on the final canal a little bit. And I think given the amount of compression I've got there, um, I'm pretty happy with all we have that is sitting slightly directed forward, but I think that's fine. It's not impinging on the position of that fits very really nice and it's straight lateral view. So have another look at that. So that's the positioning on the lateral view there. Um, and you can see that it's dead center in the middle of S1. You really only have about seven millimeters square sweet spot when you're doing a sacral flexation. And you can imagine that if you're doing this closed without, or, or open without any imaging, uh, to help you, it would be easy to miss that, uh, that sweet spot. So I don't know if Charlie can zoom in on the size of the machine that we've got there. So just zooming in here, see if I can find that. So that's the entire incision right there. Um, so everything was done through that small hole. Yeah, going to that's my forceps. So we can close this essentially just with a cruise ship. And that is it, guys. So. Uh, I think that's probably the only surgery we'll be able to stream today. Do we have anything else that we'll be able to do? A couple of cruise ships, let's see how we go. Uh, I've got a ventral slot that I may be able to do a little bit later. Those actually come, in, come out really well. So stay tuned um, and we'll try to post um, uh, an event coming up today where we'll repair a uh, cervical disc uh, protrusion in a large dog uh, that's causing acute onset of paralysis. And uh, uh, we'll be doing a CT myelogram and then hopefully a ventral slot on that. Anyway, thanks a lot guys and we'll catch up with you later. Fade out the hip music. Uh -huh. <laughs>